I'm here and I'm from a long ways off. I'm a Yanomama. And I call you people Nabas. I'm a Yanomama. I don't live like you live here. Our life is very different. Where I live is a very vast and empty jungle. It's a very difficult jungle, a very, a very hard jungle to survive in. There's snakes and all kinds of insects. There's danger everywhere. And I live in, in a lot different buildings than this. But I'm happy to be here because I know that you are my brothers and my sisters in Christ. My family and are, are very far away off. And even though I don't know what it's like to fly and I'm scared, I, I flew here anyway. I want you to know that at one time in my life I was a very wicked person. I was a person that didn't know what it was right to do what was good. I was taught by my fathers and their fathers before him in a way of life that was destructive to my people. And some of you probably have read about us. But I'm here to tell you that without, without the great spirit that has set me free, there is no hope for Yanomam. The Yanomam people will never be delivered without this great spirit's help. I was a person who was bound in terrible bondage. I was all everything that I did had me in terrible bondage to to Omawa, to the spirit of evil. I was trained by my my people to be a shaman, and the things that we did was to destroy our own people, our warfares, our bow and arrows, our club fights our chest poundings, our stealing women from other villages. Those things were destroying my people. I'm a person that knows what it really is like to be at war. I'm a person that knows what it's like to have clubs beat my body. And that's how us Yanomama live, and many of my people are still living today. My fathers decided that I would be a shaman because the spirit world was talking to me. The spirit world was talking to me through animals, and the, the, my elders of my tribe decided when I was a small child that I would become a shaman. And so they began to blow drugs up my nostrils. Many days they would blow drugs up my, my nose. They wanted me to be a shaman so that I could defend the people of my village. They told me that I would be the healer, I would be the protector. But I, I found out that my life turned out to be a life of bondage. They, for many, many days, they would blow drugs into my nose. And my head was throbbing all the time. Many, many days, blowing the drugs up my nostrils. And they wouldn't let me eat. I had to fast the whole time. They even, they even gave me no water at all until I was so messed up that I, I couldn't hardly even think anymore. And they began to teach me the chants and the ways of the outside world. And I passed many, many days doing this. And I almost died of hunger. I became very weak, very skinny. And at the end of that time, they told me that I had made it. They told me, now we have no more to train you. You now have to chant by your own self. You have to take the drugs by yourself and chant to the spirit world by yourself so that they will come to you. Never be silent at night. Chant all night long to the spirit so that they will come. And so at night I would chant and I would chant and I would chant and I would chant and chant. 
After many, many days, the spirits came to me in many different forms. They came and they began to live within the house of my heart. They were beautiful creatures. They promised me everything as they would come and live within me, what they would do and how they would help me. And I thought, this is the happiness that I've been searching for. And I thought, there's so many of them. Now I will be the most powerful shaman of all. And they began to live within me. And so many of them lived within me that my the, the light no longer existed within me. I was completely dark. But I began to hate my people. And I began to hate the ones that I was supposed to heal. And one time my uncle, my uncle who was very dear to me, got sick. And I took drugs and chanted for him. And I chanted for him, but I realized that my spirits were, were killing him instead of healing him. And he finally said to me, don't chant for me anymore. I'm dying and it's your spirits that are destroying me. And I became very sad and I realized that I had been lied to. And he died. And I wanted to get rid of these spirits, but I wasn't able to. And I thought to myself, what am I going to do? Maybe I need more spirits. Maybe I need other spirits to help me control the ones that I have. And another adult in my village got sick, and I chanted for him, and I called more and more spirits to live within me. And I chanted for him again. And I chanted, and I chanted, and I chanted for him. And I called to the spirits, and I, I begged them to help, to give me him. And all I did was become very tired. And in the spirit world, I saw my spirits were destroying this man again. And I was told that I'm dying and your spirits are killing me. And I, I wanted to give up. I just wanted to throw away the spirits and quit being a shaman because they were destructive. And I wondered how, how can I be set free from this? What am I going to do? How am I going to get out of this? And I realized that they were destroying me and also destroying my people. And they seemed so wise and so helpful and so loving at first until I realized that they filled me with hate for everyone. And I become more and more messed up in my mind and I begin to hate even my own family. But I was still considered, even with all of the mess up that I was in, I was still considered a very powerful person. And I began to search and I would roam the jungle searching for more spirits to help me control the spirits that I had. <laughs> 